I didn't know it when I purchased this property in 2008, but my great-grandfather actually grew up and was raised right across the street here. At the cemetery up there, the first front row is all my family. My grandfather was a dairy farmer all his life, uh, well up until the late 90s when they sold out of the dairy business and they began growing strawberries, but um, he's really been an influence to me and he passed away in 2010 and that's when I really decided this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to carry on that legacy of hard work and patience and, you know, persistence, I guess. Strawberries are what you really think of as the first crop of spring, so to us that was one of the reasons we chose it. It was also the one thing my grandparents grew after they sold their dairy. So it was kind of like a going back, doing what they used to do. So. Like carrying on the like farming, farming tradition, yes. you know, mm -hmm. from one generation to another. Just in a different way. Yeah, with the high tunnel technology. And so you're able to get strawberries earlier. Because typically uh, most field producers do not get strawberries until the first or second week of May. And we just started picking this last week this year. So at the end of April, or even the middle of April, you're able to pick strawberries yes. out of the hot tunnel. Which last year we started the first week of April. And so Kelly, do you notice that the strawberries are easier to raise in the hot tunnel? For us, it seems to be, which we do still put them in plastic even in here in the hot tunnel. So it reduces the weeds, and which is where you usually have the losses in field production, I would say. Where do you sell your strawberries? Last year, we actually just would put posts on Facebook and people would come here to pick them up. I would just let them know how many quarts I'd picked that day or something and it was, we kept a list and would get in contact with people. But uh, this year we will be selling at the farmer's market, the Franklin Simpson farmer's market. I see your chickens on yes. your Facebook page. Yes. So you guys have chickens as well. We do. That was something that we started back last year too. We're kind of getting into a little bit of everything. but. We've, right now we've only got five laying hens, but we've got at least 30 more we've added this spring. So we do sell eggs, yeah, um, which um, Zach and uh, Michael, they also have a few chickens and they bring theirs in and add to it, which they've helped me a lot this year in the high tunnels. So. Kelly and I knew each other from school and um, we uh, worked together and wanted to grow together. We have similar interests and, and goals in mind, I think. And what we're doing is trying different things uh, just this year, just trying to out different things. We have mescaline and different types of lettuces and spinach. Um, just kind of seeing what grows well here. Uh, she's got her strawberries in plastic, but uh, we have uh, this planted in, in the soil, as you can see, but it requires a little bit more weeding, but we're getting some really good results with some of the lettuces and, and things like that. A normal day when I get over here, it's just kind of starting to check everything out and then weeding and kind of seeing what all's growing. It's amazing to see how much everything grows, how quick it grows in the high tunnels especially. I'm a new farmer um, and so I started last year just with our little home garden pretty much and it really, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out, pulling weeds, I, it's just something so simple and tomato twining, you know, doing that, you know, it's a little aggravating but I like it. Um, it's important for me to know where my food comes from. I want to be able to provide for myself as much as I can. Um, and I think it's important that people uh, see how much work goes into farming. And so that when uh, you go to a local farmer's market or you go to a stand that uh, you understand how much work goes into producing that crop or that product for you. You know, it's, it's just rewarding to be able to, whenever we want to make dinner, walk outside and grab it you know it's right there it's easy and it just really makes you feel good I think. We only have a little over nine acres here but we have the two high tunnels we have an acre garden and then our grapes which are nearly an acre and then our chickens as well so yeah. And that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work <laughs> especially the full-time job you know on top of that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Kelly why do you farm? On our shirts, we have the definition of fruition, but we like to see it all really come to fulfillment or I guess turn into something. My husband did not know what fruition meant, so I looked up that definition for him and that's kind of became our motto. So. And, yeah. so, and so you guys kind of do this together. We do. Yeah, um, he's more of our builder and I'm more of our grower. 
I didn't even know we were getting a second tunnel. He just went and picked <laughs> one up for me. And then this building, I was gone all last week and came home and the posts were up. The colors, the scents, and the flavors of summer are officially upon us. Today we're celebrating strawberries. I can't think of anything more delicious. Today we're pairing it with chicken and we're creating a really light, crisp, refreshing entree that's a little different and super simple to make. When you're first gathering your ingredients for the recipe, we're actually gonna kind of split it in half. We're gonna start with the chicken breast first. You wanna use a boneless, skinless chicken breast for this recipe. If you'll use a large Ziploc bag, you're gonna place your chicken breast inside the bag. And using a balsamic vinegar, you're gonna drizzle it over top of the chicken. So you're probably looking at about four tablespoons or so. And that's gonna go into the refrigerator for about five minutes. And that's the perfect time. That's exactly what you'll need to prepare the topping, which uses the strawberries. For the sake of the video, I went ahead and actually marinated the chicken, and so we're actually ready to go ahead and put that in the oven. Now, preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and once the chicken's marinated for about five minutes, it can go ahead and go in, and it'll probably take about 30 minutes or so to bake. So we're gonna take the caps off of our strawberries. You wanna get as close to the green uh, leaf as you can so you don't waste any. And I'm actually cutting these strawberries in really small bite-sized pieces. This is a topping that's gonna go over top of our chicken. You can kind of think of it as a caprese salad. We've done one of those on the KYF2 project before with the peaches and it's very similar to that except for it's berries instead. And you know, the really great thing about these berries, you're, you're looking at about 35 calories per cup. Dinner doesn't always have to be savory, so any chance that you can use a sweet flavor like strawberries um, to create that sweet and savory mix that is so tasty, it's definitely worth giving it a try, especially if they're in season and you can get them where they are at, you know, the peak flavor. And with our strawberries, we're gonna use a little bit of fresh basil. I love the flavor that basil gives, but I also love the color too. And I'll show you a little trick with cutting basil. If you'll actually go ahead and wash it and pick your leaves off of the stems, you can layer all of the leaves so that they're on top of each other one by one. And then starting at one end, you're gonna do a roll. So rolling each of the leaves together. And being super careful by tucking your fingers underneath, you're just gonna cut straight across. Once you cut into your leaves, once you make that incision, you immediately smell the flavors that this basil is gonna give. And so see how you kind of all have that same, same size all the way across the board. I'm gonna put it all together and for this recipe, I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this beautiful green flavor to our strawberries. And then we're gonna use some mozzarella cheese. You can either use a shredded mozzarella cheese or if you have a fresh mozzarella cheese that you wanna cut up yourself, you can do that. Hey, you can't have too much cheese, right? Okay, a little bit of salt and pepper. and a little bit more balsamic vinegar, about a tablespoon or two. And then you'll just combine all of those flavors together. We are just moments away from having a sweet and a savory dinner that is definitely gonna be new to your menu. So the topping that we've made, we've got strawberries, we've got basil, we've got mozzarella cheese, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, our chicken baked at 400 degrees for about 35, 30-ish minutes or so. And now we're just gonna take this super sweet topping and we're gonna place it right over top of our chicken. There are so few ingredients in this recipe, yet it's so flavorful, and it's definitely a reminder of how lucky we are right here in Kentucky to have some of the fresh, natural, and so flavorful ingredients. We hope that you'll check this recipe out. Give it a try. If you do, we wanna know, so comment below and let us hear your experience, and we'll see you next time right here on the KYF2 Project.